All right, here's the teardown of the uh, DeWalt DCF 901, their Chinese high torque, half inch, 12 volt impact wrench. Had a couple people, or at least one person, ask why there really is even 12 volt lines. And there are a few comments about size and weight. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, a lot of people just don't need the power and essentially productivity of large 20 volt tools. There are a lot of people who may not have the either the biggest hands or they're having to use the they're using the tools and assembly, manufacturing, all sorts of places. HVAC where you don't need massive power out of the tools. What you want is something that has enough power and is lightweight and more convenient to use. So that's why the whole 12 volt lines exist. Anyway, we're gonna tear this down. I assume it's gonna be <laughs> Like just about every other impact wrench. Although DeWalt has recently been going from two gears to three gears in the gearbox. So we're going to see if that's true here. So when we tear these down, you do need to, since it's two case halves that split apart that go around the gear case, we do need to split the stickers. And you just kind of carefully find the seam. And then just draw your little knife across. We'll have another one down here right at the bottom. And as opposed to attempting to peel these stickers and put them back and all that, much easier just to split them. That way, they're more likely to <laughs> essentially stay in place. We've got eight screws holding this together. Knock those out. All T10s. I do not recommend actually using power tools to, or at least when you're starting the screws, you want to start them by hand. That way you can feel the track that the threads were originally in. The problem with plastic is you just put in the screws, you run them in. Uh, half the time they end up basically cutting a new track, which causes more warping and damage to the plastic. And the screws just don't hold it as tight. Once we've done that, we just slowly... Oh, I did forget the back sticker. Now we ought to just kind of work it up. On all most power tools, the side that you remove, actually most electronics and things that you disassemble, the side that you pull the screws out of, I would say 98, 99% of the time is the side that you lift off. But you always kind of want to double check, but usually that's how it is. I kind of like the slightly, I should say, more mature design where they do have these steel dowel pins here. We have another one down here. And I do like that. It helps hold the case together a little bit better. And it's uh, something more recent. Not all of DeWalt's brushless tools are quite built like that. We have the big brushless motor controller, power capacitors, the switch. If we can get that, there is our numbers on the switch. And yes, since these are brushless, they have a little computer in there, and so they actually have revisions, and that even looks like a software version right there. Anyway, little rubber bumpers to help prevent the motor from rattling around. It is a back fan unit, which is interesting. The impacts suck air in through the middle of the tool and blow it out the back, which is unconventional, where their brushless drills are conventional. The fan's right here, and it pulls in air through the back and then blows it out through the middle of the tool, just like corded tools. So that's always been kind of interesting. This series of wires here are for the Hall effect sensors and magnetic sensors so they can sense where the motor is. It helps with low-speed torque. So anyway, and then we just have a little area right here where the wires go in for uh, the little light ring. Always a little bit of a hassle. All the wires are all either soldered or like on the Hall effect sensors, that connector is actually glued into the motor, very difficult to remove. The lights, however, are on a little plug, a little socket. It's under these wires. It's always a, a hassle, kind of a big hassle to get at. Anyway, we'll also notice down here, they have pretty short wires, so maybe they're not so worried about it. They do have some strain relief, but it'd be nice to see some 
hot glue or something on there just to help reduce the chance of fatigue. A lot of cordless power tools, if they just, comp just stop working, it's the first place to check to see if you have wires that have fatigued right there at the battery connector. Finish pulling this apart. Interestingly enough, these are essentially assembled in a fixture and then set into the body. There's our reverse switch. Make sure that the little center tang <laughs> gets over the little nub on the switch because uh, it sure is special when you reassemble a tool and realize you got that switch not in the right place. So we'll just pull the whole assembly out. There's our integrated um, sticker for anti-shoplifting. It's gotten so bad with tools that they even put them on the box. They integrate them inside the actual tool itself. And here is the entire impact wrench. Really kind of surprising. Now on many cordless tools, corded, the centering of the rotating part of the motor, the quote-unquote armature, and the field is done by the case. When you pull them apart, usually the motor gets stuck against the side. But this is actually self-contained. The motor still runs freely. We actually have a seal there to help prevent uh, leakage. And this motor runs by itself. I bet we could even plug it in, plug in a battery. So I know we can. I'll try not to shock myself too much here. Kind of neat to be able to run it like that. Anyway, let's take a look at this gearbox. Just an O-ring seal holds in this part. And I see the whole gear assembly. This all came out as a unit, and that just happens to be because the bearing is pretty tight in this nylon back. There we go. Pop that out. There's our ring gear. That splines into some cutouts in the back of the gearbox. We'll look at that in a second. They are straight cut gears, but indeed, they are using three gears. So that is nice to see. And we have this back bearing here, which supports that whole carriage. And this is a little bit more interesting. They increase the mass. You can see they actually have internal dog teeth. And then a little bit more mass around the outside edge. And then... Let me get this other part up so you can see it. There's the anvil. And when these usually fail, it's either the anvil shears off right here. Usually it's these two legs that shear off. And Milwaukee's corded impact wrenches actually use a similar design, kind of like where the weight is like this. But then this has like a bottom plate, like the anvil will have a bottom plate to give it a little bit more uh, reinforcement. Otherwise... Real simple design. The one thing I did want to see in here is if they used a needle bearing, which I doubt they did. And no, they didn't use a needle bearing in there. It's just a steel sleeve, which is a little disappointing. On the 3 8 one, they actually have a needle bearing in that spot. So a little disappointing. DeWalt could have used more rolling bearing elements. I've even seen, like in the Milwaukee, where they use a needle bearing inside there, a ball bearing that they jam in for uh, end play. So, DeWalt could certainly put a little bit more effort into it, considering how much money they're charging. I'm going to put a couple extra dabs of grease in here. Put a little grease, getting this back together. One quick tip, there are these little cutouts to make clearance for the screws on the motor. And so you'll want to get these half-moon notches that are here aligned right with the center of these split posts on the gearbox. Then we just take the whole assembly... Kind of jam it together like so, and just nestle it back into where it came from. Going to be super special getting it in here. Kind of be careful with these little wires here. You got to fidget around until you get everything together. And then the last thing is that little switch. And you want to make sure that those little wires are running in their little track. It really sucks to pinch those off. And there we are. It's really pretty simple. As far as any power tool to take apart, uh, either just uh, corded electric drills are super simple. Uh, cordless ones have these stacked planetary transmissions, and they can be a little bit more complicated if you take the gearbox apart. 
probably the very the second easiest is easily impact wrenches, regardless if they're electric, corded, cordless, or air. Impact wrenches are very simple tools. Make sure I didn't hose anything. Clear out some of that extra grease. Let's make sure it impacts. Really, it's not bad power. I mean, 10 years ago, if you were to show somebody a, you know, three pound impact wrench like this that put out 250 foot pounds of consistent torque, they'd say 400 nut busting. That would be hard torque. The absolute peak sharpest impulse, which is difficult to realize in real world conditions, but nonetheless, um, even though the wall's pretty expensive, it's still kind of neat that you can get this kind of power from an electric tool in a pretty compact size. So anyway, that was the uh, teardown, and I usually do that with a lot of the, at least the newer power tools, just so people can see what's inside. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, Please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.